So I want to kind of get started with the class outline. So our anchor verse is from 1 Timothy 1.5, and I know we've read this before, but I think it's really important to read it uh, at any point that we, any chance that we get in the classes that we are teaching. Uh, it says, the aim of our charge is love that issues from a pure heart and a good conscience and a sincere faith. So I think that's very important. You know, we want to be able to, to show our love and pure heart and good conscience to all those around us. Uh, and I think that's just really important um, words for us to have in our daily life. Uh, after this slide, we'll start with an opening prayer. I have a prayer list, a specific prayer list I'd like to, for us to pray to start us out and also to close in a prayer um, at the end. If uh, we should have time, I'm going to make time so we can have that prayer because I think that that's really important to kind of have the beginning and the end as a prayer. Uh, and then we're going to read 1 Timothy 4, verses 1 through 16. Look through a high-level view of 1 Timothy 4, just very high level. Um, and some of the goal, the goal I had for this class is to be able to distinguish between false teachers in today's religious world and being a true servant of Christ in today's world. So I think that the Bible shows really good examples of that. But I think in today's society, we are bombarded with a lot of things that are not correct and are very false, a uh, false sense of... Uh, servitude, a false sense of like religious aff affiliation. Um, and some of my objectives is also uh, show some examples of false teaching in the Bible, identifying the false teachings in the Old Testament, New Testament, uh, the prophets, the teachers, uh, unveiling deception. So what we see today, I think today's application again is very important because it deals with us right now. Uh, and then be a servant for Christ. You know, we want to be able to, to wrap that up with the positive things a Christian has in this world and what, what we can accomplish uh, to those who are lost or, or maybe spiritually sick. But it, it, and it's like, he's like, you know, I, I've had that dream before too, kind of getting up for a sermon and then not, not remembering what I'm going to talk about. So I think a clear mind for the study is really good. Uh, prayer for the lost, I think that's very important. Uh, for those who have not found God, those who are led astray by false teachings, false hope, uh, false doctrine. Uh, prayer for the spiritually sick, that's just as important because we know that we, f we know God and if we fall away, that is about the worst you can do. You know, that's, that's a bad position to be in where you know the truth and you are, you are willingly and knowingly uh, not studying and not uh, following him and, and worshiping him. So, and then close it off with uh, disguiding the leadership of the church, elders, deacons, and the preachers. So let's go ahead and go to God in prayer, and then we'll get started with our class. Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for this week you've given us, this beautiful weather you've given us. Thank you for the time that we have together throughout the week, it, not just the first day of the week together, but we have this middle part of the week where we can get back together after the first day of the week and rejoin and, and re rekindle, you know, our relationships and just give each other just the, the courage and the, and the backing up that, you know, our faith needs and our spirits needs, you know, and uh, this is a good time to come together. And I want to pray for a clear mind of the study and not just this study, but the rest of our classes that are coming up, that we have a clear understanding of what the teachings in First and Second Timothy are and how we can apply those to our lives. And Lord, we want to pray for the lost. We, we, those that are falling behind and falling down and, and not worshiping you, Lord, and, and have lost their way, uh, we just pray that, that they can find your word, Lord, and find your strength and be able to be believers and be able to uh, repent and come to your fold, Lord, and, and be with you so we can all have that time and glory with you in, in those days to come. Lord, we also want to pray for the spiritually sick, for those maybe in our numbers or other numbers around the world that are believers but have fallen away and, and have uh, really struggled with their faith and really struggled with the teachings and, and trying to live your word, Lord, and just Please give us the strength to help them through this if they are willing and able to get help and get the spiritual help that they need. Lord, we also want to pray for the spiritual health of this church and the leaders that lead this church and that we have such a great set of leaders, great set of elders that are helping us 
guiding us and giving us the tools that we need to be uh, your, your faithful followers and your faithful servants, Lord. And also the deacons and all the work that they do behind the scenes. Um, we just are really thankful for that, that the, you know, this, a lot of things can't run without a lot of those uh, men coming forward and, and being able to help us grow as a congregation as well as the elders. And, and Lord, we want to remember the preachers. Daniel and Steve, and that they work so hard to, to prepare lessons and prepare our minds first day of the week, through the week, uh, in Zoom calls, um, and other places, uh, studies, and um, we're just really grateful for those times that we have and, and those men that we have that, ch that chose to stand firm in the faith and, and give us what they have studied and given us the truth that we need to to carry through our lives and lord we just pray again for all our strength and all our might and just be with us as we continue to go through this week In your son's name we pray amen all right uh so if you're looking at this picture where where do you think which path would lead to heaven would it be false teachings would it be true teachings I mean, obviously, this is an easy answer, but I think to a lot of people, this is a really hard truth. Uh, and the one, the two verses that I really thought of like instantly would be, uh, oh, there it goes, uh, Matthew chapter seven, verses thirteen and fourteen. Uh, Enter the narrow gate, for the gate is wide and the way is easy that leads to destruction, and those who enter it are many. For the gate is narrow and the way is hard that leads to life and those that have find it are few. And I think this is really powerful. This is telling us that the path that we're taking may be difficult and may be hard, but it's not the easy path. But the, easy, but the best thing for us are not always the easiest. And I think that's how we kind of learn and, and grow in strength uh, in our faith and, and each other and helping each other out as a servant. I thought this was a, a really good way to kind of segue into our, our study today, or tonight. And um, so I want to go ahead and read 1 Timothy uh, chapter 4, verses 1 through 16. Uh, follow along. I'm, I'm reading from the ESV. Um, so, uh, now the Spirit expressively says that later times that some will depart from the faith by devoting themselves to deceitful spirits and teachings of demons through insincerity of liars whose consciences are seared, who forbid marriage and require abstinence from foods and gods created to be received in these thanksgivings by those who believe and know the truth. For everything created by God is good and nothing is to be rejected, or if it's received with thanksgiving, for it to be made holy by the word of God in prayer. If you put these things before the brothers, you will be good servant of Jesus Christ, of Christ Jesus, being trained in the words of the faith and the good doctrine that you have followed. Have nothing to do with irreverent silly myths rather train yourselves for godliness for while bodily training of some value with godliness of the value in every way as it holds promise to the present life and also for the life to come the saying is trustworthy and deserving of full acceptance for this is the end we toil and strive because we have our hope set on the living god who is the savior of all people especially of those who believe command and teach these things let no one despise you of your youth but set the believers of example and speech and conduct and love and faith and purity. Until I come, devote yourselves to public reading of scripture, to exhortation of teaching. Do not neglect the gift that you have, which was given to you by prophecy when the council of the elders laid their hands on you. Practice these things and immerse yourself in them so that all may see your progress. Keep a close watch on yourself and on teaching. Persist in this, for by so doing, you will save both yourself and your hearers. And I thought that this would be a really good uh, Psalms 119, uh, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. We sing that song, and I think it's, a, it's really relevant to not only the, when it was written, but uh, to us today, because the word is the, the, the unveiling of the deception. So let's look at a high level view of uh, chapter four. Like I said, very high level, this isn't, we're not going to get as deep into it, but one of the reasons I gave the worksheets, I, I gave you a textual worksheet, so it's basically the whole chapter, so if you want to mark it up, highlight, write notes in it, um, 
you know, you're more than welcome to do so. That's what I have it for. Um, and, uh, and I believe the next, yeah, the next slide, uh, actually the, the first page of the second worksheet, the, it's a double-sided worksheet. The first part of the worksheet is going to be uh, what we're going to talk about here for the high-level view. Uh, you can make your notes on that uh, as well. And on the back of that page, uh, we'll, our next slide, uh, we'll go through some Old Testament verses and some uh, New Testament verses about false teachings and uh, false prophecies. So, a uh, quick overview, Paul's response to false teachers. Chapter 4 is often viewed as being written in two parts. A description of these false teachers in Ephesus, 1 Timothy 4, 1-5, through 5, and practical steps for defense against the false teachers, as the rest of the chapter talks about. Uh, this chapter includes instructions to Timothy about his ministry. Paul says that the Lord said that in later times, later times many will abandon their faith and start following many deceiving spirits. They will have taught by things by demons. These teachings would come from hypocritical liars and had conscious, consciousness that had been seared just like hot iron, like it talks about in what we just read in 1 Timothy 4. So Paul's response to false teachers, uh, a very high-level view, is false teachers in Ephesus. So these liars, as Paul says, forbid these people to marry as they ordered them to avoid certain foods that God had created to be received by true believers. Paul goes on to say that everything God has created is good. Nothing of his should be rejected, but received with thanksgiving, since it has been consecrated by prayer and God's word. And then I'm going to stop after this. Uh, after this, So practical steps for defense. Uh, what are some ways, if somebody wants to share, I think we have some mics maybe going around. Uh, okay, we have Michael with a mic. Uh, what are some... Uh, practical steps for defense that maybe y'all might might be a good addition to this. Yep, Brian. Well, I just go with the words that Paul gave to Timothy. He says, point these things out mm -hmm. and so that the brethren will be made aware of these false instructions. And how do you point it out? Well, you obviously provide to the rest of the brethren, the word of God, which is the truth that contradicts these false teachers, because clearly marriage is honored by God. And in Acts chapter 10, I believe it is, uh, all foods are, uh, are uh, uh, good because God mm -hmm. created them. Right. And I think there's a, a broader application than these yeah. two things. Definitely, definitely, yeah. Thank you for that. Um, yeah, I, I agree. You know, the, there's different steps for defense, but I think if you look back, like uh, Brian was saying in the Acts, you know, where, you know, the, 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 fruit, uh, the food and the uh, fruit of the Spirit and uh, just being able to strengthen yourself in that, I think it really goes far uh, in your spiritual walk with God. Uh, more instructions from Timothy. Uh, Paul told Timothy to tell his sisters and brothers about these things that would make him a wonderful minister to the Lord. Paul says that physical training does, not, does have some value, but that godliness has the most value because of its promise and not only present in life, but also for life ahead. So all good things come from God. This was also a trustworthy declaration that should be fully accepted. Paul goes to say that this is the reason why we strive and labor, because we have faith in our living God, the Savior of everyone, especially those that believe. Uh, and we're also called in the Bible to be set apart. You know, we are, set, we are setting that example of what God teaches, uh, especially in today's, but even back in Ephesus, you know, back in Paul and Timothy's time, and uh, Corinth and, and other places Paul traveled. You know, he, he is teaching these brothers and sisters in Christ in the first church to set themselves apart, especially from maybe the Jewish religion uh, that they were accustomed to, or if, if they were Jews that converted uh, of course, like the Gentiles may not have that kind of experience or history, but I think that's definitely very important. And I want to finally kind of towards the latter part of the, the chapter, talking about being an example of Christ. So this is like the, the bulk of the, of the chapter, whereas it's, it's basically, so it's the deception part and talking about the false prophecies and the false teachers.
He was a good example for believers in conduct, in speech, and in faith, in purity, and love. He told Timothy to until he arrived. He said that Timothy should not neglect his gift that had been given to him by way of prophecy at the time, and the elders had laid their hands upon him. Paul then tells Timothy to always be very diligent concerning these matters and give himself wholly to everyone he could see his progress. To you a lying vision, worthless deviation, and the deceit of their own minds. Uh, 16 through 17. So lies. So they're identifying false teachers as, as what it's talking about lies. So do not listen to the words of the prophets that prophesy to you, filling with vain hopes. They speak visions of their own minds, not from the mouth of the Lord. They say continually to those who despise the word of the Lord, it shall be well with you, and everyone who stubbornly follows his own heart. They say no disaster shall call, call, come upon you. So they're given this false sense of hope to those that they're trying to bring um, you know, to their fold and away from God. We also see in Deuteronomy 13, uh, and I'm not going to read through the whole 1 through 4, but kind of talks about the dreamer of dreams. If a prophet is a dreamer of dreams arises among you and gives you a sign of wonder and a sign of you know, bringing the dreamer of dreams, the magicians, the, the sorcerers, the ones that are trying to pull them away from God. Uh, again, y'all think of any other examples maybe in the Old Testament um, before I move on, of uh, this type of thing that's happening to in the Old Testament. Uh, is there anywhere in the, uh, anywhere else in the Old Testament uh, that you can maybe think of that uh, talking about the sorcerers and the uh, and the prophecy, the false prophets? Right. Yeah, that's what I was kind of thinking, you know, all the false, the idols, uh, you know, the, the multiple gods, uh, you know, and, and there was a lot of these sorcerers and magicians and false prophets that are, you know, prophesying for these gods. And it's confusing. It's confusing the people of, of you know, the, the Jewish people and, and uh, pulling them away from God. Uh, Micah 3.5, uh, it talks about... Next picture. Uh, Thus says the Lord concerning the prophets who lead my people astray, who cry peace when they have something to eat, but declare war against him when they put nothing in their mouth. Uh, also, Ezekiel 13 9. Uh, my hand will be against the prophets with false visions and who are lying deviations. They shall not be in the council of my people, nor enrolled in the register of the house of Israel. Not shall enter the land of Israel and shall know that I am Lord God. And then finally, in the Old Testament, I found one Deuteronomy 8. Prophet who presumes to speak the word. The false idols. 
anybody, any other gods, and not the true God. Uh, let's see, so we see some examples, uh, and I'm not going to read all of Second Peter 2, but, you know, just kind of an overview. It does highlight three main aspects of deceptions. First, these false teachers denied the sovereignty of Christ. Uh, I don't have that. Even though they brought them with his blood. Second, they openly indulged in sexual sin and taught others to do the same. And finally, they used lies to exploit the Christians of their own gain. They were greedy, it says. Uh, Ephesians 4.25 uh, talks about Each one of you speak the truth with the neighbor and that the members of one another. So we talk about falsehoods. And uh, Matthew 7.15 uh, Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but in, in inwardly are ravenous wolves. We've heard And I think in the next slide or the slide after, I'll have an example of like today's, uh, today example. Uh, in just 1 Timothy 4, we read, Now the Spirit of faith, devoting themselves to deceitful spirits and teachings of demons through the insincerity of liars whose consciences are seared. And then Luke 6, 26, Woe to you when all people speak well of you, so their fathers did to false prophets. Uh, anybody have anything they want to add to this list? I mean, obviously, there's, there's, a lot, there's, a lot, there's a lot more references to what I have here, but these are kind of the ones that stood out to me, uh, especially in the Old Testament, uh, talking about the different, um, and even the New Testament ha having the different evil things. So anybody have anything they want to add before we move on to the next slide? Oh, yes, Shannon. who are false prophets, who have their own desires, and who are doing it for selfish gain, making up stories or lies or whatever. But I just like, it's interesting to think about how First Timothy 4 verse 1 talks about the teaching of demons, mm -hmm. how demons are also behind this, just kind of adds another mm -hmm. element of evil to it, um, something I hadn't really thought about. But yeah, definitely. I, and, and that's kind of similar to what I was looking into, it's, you know, there's, Evil deception goes so many ways, but deception comes from Satan, right? That's that's the main source of deception. You know, he tried to deceive Jesus uh, in the desert and uh, try to get him to follow him. Yes, Daniel. Yeah. So along those lines, you know, thinking then about a verse like in James one, where it says, you know, someone sins because they're led away by their own desires, and then you know, to Shannon's point, there's spiritual forces, as you mentioned, Satan, chief among them, that is looking, you know, trying to offer people opportunities to sin and to turn astray from God's commands. Um, so, you know, that demonic activity should kind of scare us and sober yeah. us up to realize we really need to be careful because yeah. uh, we can so easily be led astray. But, you know, from our standpoint of what we can see, I mean, part of what I'm noticing in all the passages you've put up and then in First Timothy 4 is, you know, it's, it's the source of, of what, you know, where we're getting our information or where we're getting our wisdom or, or whatever. Um, all these false teachers are drawing off of um, really invalid sources, right? Their own dreams right. or their own wisdom or, uh, you know, it mentioned in First Timothy 4 about irreverent, silly myths, uh, deceitful spirits, right? Um, and, uh, and so, you know, the, the care that we need to go to the right source, to be honest about that, to seek it in, in humility and in prayer, uh, but to, um, to be on guard that everything's being drawn from the proper source and that we're not being led astray by these false sources or, as we've been saying as well, our own just desires, our own greed, our own, yeah. you know, what we want to be true for our own purposes. Right. Yeah, thank you for that. Uh, do you have something, Brad? The only thing I was add is... <laughs> after these comments is sort of a summation, but there's only two reasons I can think of for speaking a falsehood. One is that you're genuinely an error but think you're right. And the other is you're a liar. You know that you're not speaking the truth. And of course, this condemnation here is men who are speaking lies. Therefore, they know the truth, but they're misleading others. So I see a dual responsibility to be uh, sound in God's word so that you can refute 
to false doctrines, yeah. and secondly, not to fall victim to it so that you don't end up, and you might, perhaps the greatest danger is somebody who is sincere in heart but doesn't have the strength in the word to refute the doctrine. So they adopt it. So they start sincerely teaching the mm -hmm. lie. Right. And so as we are teachers, I think that somewhere, some passages, teachers are held to a higher responsibility. Definitely. I mean, because those people trust what you're saying. And then you're mm -hmm. either because of your naivety to believe the lie or the utter evilness of speaking a lie, you lead people astray. Yeah. And what did God say? It, you know, the blind leadeth the blind into the ditch. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. So just, just kind of like wrapping this up. Yeah, and, and I kind of left the words. Let's see. Uh, you know, down here. So it's just kind of like there's a theme. Uh, you know, lies, vain hope, despising. You know, dreamer of dreams, like like Brian was was alluding to. You know, leading people astray, uh, false visions. You know, definitely just coming out with just anything to lie to, to have followers, you know, that's ravenous wolves in sheep clothing. I think that's a really important one. Uh, and actually that kind of segues into the next uh, slide here. Now, I, I really worked, I, I just didn't know how I was going to bring this part up. This is just very, it's, it's very rampant in today's society. Uh, but this one here, uh, there are those who distort the word of God and I have an excerpt from an Episcopal Church website, uh, and this deals with the LGBTQ, uh, which is very, very prevalent in our society right now. Uh, you know, and it was a big surprise to me, uh, you know, seeing these different, uh, and watching some of these like uh, news news articles or these little snippets where they're uh, interviewing some of these these women pastors, uh, which are, you know, obviously have the pride flag, you know, sash over and interviewing them about how they are, you know, using the word of God to say it's okay to be in the LGBTQ community and still serve God and be, you know, without any fault or without any, anything like that. And I think this, this is, this is pulled from their website. So this is something that's that they believe very strongly about, and they and they even put they even put scriptures in there to to, to use their argument, which goes nowhere. You know, it's it's again falsifying the word. It's you know uh, nothing can separate us from the love of God. Very true, but they use it as a message for all people, including those of the homosexual community. And you know, I just I thought that this would be be okay to put in. I talked to Daniel about this a little bit. And I'm just like, you know, I think that, that this is really prevalent for us because this is what are teaching in, the, in, in some of the schools, uh, some other churches, uh, everywhere in public. It's, it's, every, it's, it's just growing and it's, it's really sad. Uh, they have another one, God did not make a mistake by creating people. So they're, they're alluding to God created them as a homosexual. Well, we know that to be true because this is not a lifestyle that, that God condones. And so why would he create this? You know, why would he create somebody? And I, this, there's a lot of uh, psychological things, and this is a very deep rabbit hole. Uh, so I didn't want to spend a lot of time on this. And I just kind of wanted to give a, just this expert, just to kind of, we, we know what's going on in today's society. And we know the, the things that are, that are happening and that we just have to be very vigilant about, especially with our children uh, younger kids, older kids, you know, even some adults, like I was saying, the lost that, that have, like what Brian was saying, they don't have, they're not embedded into the word, so they're going to be easily swayed by wolf in sheep's clothing. Um, and there's just a few other things. I didn't want to read all through this because obviously this is just something that is man-made uh, and they're tying uh, God's word to it, which I think is just you know, there's going to be answers to that one day. It's it's going to be uh, it's going to be something that that's going to have to be answered for. Uh, and I, like I said, I, I don't want to give it too much uh, weight. Uh, just a few other things. You know, people are justified through Christ, including those people. All people have intentionally created by God, including the LGBTQ people. Overarching themes in the Christian Bible are God loves everyone and has reconciled everyone through Jesus Christ, including these individuals. So. 
again, I don't want to give this a lot of weight. I don't think that it's worth the time, uh, me personally. Uh, but, you know, I just want us to be aware because I think this is very prevalent in our studies uh, with false teaching and uh, leading people astray. Uh, and I think, I had, oh, you know, I'm sorry, I had a, yeah, so a great example of this could be found in uh, 2 Corinthians 11, 1 through 15, where I'm just going to summarize where Paul is protecting uh, the Christians in Corinth. False apostles in Corinth are trying to seduce the Corinthians away from their commitment to Christ. Paul is attempting to keep the Corinthians from sin. The false apostles teach a different Jesus, a different spirit, a different gospel, all false. They are like the serpent in the garden, tempting Eve to sin. Yes, Brian. That what we're seeing here, what we're seeing here, is the fulfillment of uh, the first verse of this chapter. Mm -hmm. That in the later times, not referring to a last time or or, prop, or foretelling of the end of the world, but mm -hmm. in the in the future, people are going to fall away, and mm -hmm. it's happening. We can see it. It's oh, it's it's a disease throughout all mankind, but we see a definite falling away now in. Uh, in almost breathtaking proportions and speed. Yeah, yeah definitely. It's, it's ramping up uh, for sure. And that and it has a lot to do with technology, like Daniel's lessons, previous lessons. Technology has a lot to do with this. Social media is a very big, uh, uh, very big platform for a lot of these uh, groups. Um, yeah, no, I, I totally, definitely agree with that. Uh, and I think that, you know, it goes back to that Matthew passage uh, where uh, the widened, you know, path is easiest to follow because, you know, it's easy to, to do easy life. There's no, there's no hard uh, spiritual living, you know, there's no, there's no, um, you know, just uh, morality. I mean, it's easy to follow, but this is a narrow path. That's, that's the hard one. That's the one that we have to, to walk. Uh, yeah. So just two quick things on a, an organization quoting scripture, even Satan's quoted scripture to Jesus mm -hmm. improperly, but there was a misuse of, of scripture. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what we're warned against doing here from Timothy. The thing that to me really stands out uh, about Timothy being left in Ephesus just a few years before this on Paul's third journey on the way back to Jerusalem, he met with the Ephesian elders mm -hmm. and he told them that from among your own selves, people are going to start driving the flock away. Basically, after he left, things are going to go south. So the mm -hmm. time frame for this is definitely during the lifespan of these people that are here. Yeah. And so here's the warning, and then he leaves Timothy there to do the fight. And you see that he's equipping him to stand firm. You're going to get into that in just a minute, his example. Mm -hmm. But he's given them the directives of how to select elders, how to select deacons. And a little bit later, he's going to be told you may have to rebuke elders because mm -hmm. it's from among them that some of this false teaching is coming. So yeah. to me, it's just a scary, scary thing that they sure. knew it was coming. And even mm -hmm. with all that, here you have to have a very faithful preacher to stand firm as a watch guard to make yeah. sure things aren't going south. And that seems to be where Timothy is right now, why mm -hmm. he's encouraging him like he is. Right. And, and also him being so young, they're, they're not listening. You know, Paul's like, you just have to, to show your faith. You have to be able to teach him. Uh, yes, Steve. Departing from the faith has to do with leaving the essential elements of Christianity. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we're talking about some gross uh, misuse of Scripture and, and some things that we would consider gross sins or uh, moral sins and mm -hmm. all that. But that's the beginning of where this can go to simple things like whether it's necessary to be baptized right. for the remission of sin, mm -hmm. uh, wh whether it's necessary to be concerned about uh, divorcing your spouse, uh, the essential elements of Christianity, uh, the Lord's Supper, yeah. and how we take that. So the, the fear that I have is that not so much the, the gross immorality, but in the church, mm -hmm how this society that we're living in and even we uh, participate in mm -hmm. can drive us to uh, eliminating the essential elements right. of Christianity. I agree. Yeah. Thank you. Hey, John Albert. John Albert, yeah. 
one of the things I've really appreciated about this study of Timothy is I feel like in the past, whenever we come to passages like the start of this chapter that talks about the teaching of demons, it's something that's like very overwhelming of like, oh, what is that? And I wish there was more detail and like, what is that? How do I be on the lookout for it? But in the something that I'm starting to see as we've gone through this study is like in the absence of that, you have to take a step back and say, okay, what is what is Paul addressing within Ephesus? Like in what kind of Rick was saying, like he's giving this warning of like these to an extent signs and it's when you start breaking it down i just see that it's it's people who are imposing their own will upon the body at ephesus rather than aligning themselves with god's will right and it reminds me a lot of exodus and that you see pharaoh that god's will is something it doesn't change no matter what like god's will does not change mm -hmm. and either you find yourself in alignment with it or it's going to be an absolute road grader that's going to harden your heart and do all the right. different things that we kind of see in the pattern of Exodus to a person where you will become the, and I'm sorry if I'm using this wrong, word wrong, but the antithesis of what we're supposed to be. So it's just something yeah. that I've found as we've gone through this kind of study that is, uh, for me, a big impression that I'm taking from it. Yeah, no, definitely. I, yeah, thank you for that. Uh, anybody have anything else? This is the last slide here I have. We have, we still have few minutes, I think five minutes or so. Uh, so I'm going to have enough time. We're going to go through this and then uh, I want to have the time for the prayer. I think that's really important. So anybody else have anything before we move on? Okay. So to be a servant of Christ, this is kind of like a spiritual checkup. Love for God, we know as our love should be unconditional to God. We should always devote 100% to God. Us loving God will keep us afloat through the hard times. Uh, repentance from sin. So when we look at these, this is, this is kind of the second half of the introduction. This is uh, to be a servant. How we need to be a servant for Christ. Uh, repentance from sin. You know, we have to show others that we're repenting, even though we fall short. Uh, even being Christians, that we have... Uh, that promise that, that Jesus' sacrifices and our baptism is, gives us that hope for eternity. Um, we must fall to our knees and plead for our forgiveness to God. Christ died on the cross for our sins. Like I said, we turned away from Him and we sin if, if we do not repent. Focusing on our sin pulls us away from God. So those are some things that we need to be aware of. Uh, genuine humility. Uh, humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord. It's a really, you know, it's a, one of the songs that we sing. You know, it's, it's, it's very true. We have to humble ourselves. Uh, be courageous in showing humility to others and help them grow. Not just for us. This is not just in it for us. Um, we, we have to help the others that, we have to be humble and, and help those that are struggling. Uh, I just had a quick Romans 12, 3. Paul exhorted his readers not to think more highly of themselves than they ought to, but view and conduct themselves with humility. Uh, devotion to God's glory. Devote yourself to God Almighty. Revelation 4, 11. Worthy are you, our Lord our, and God, to receive glory and honor and power, and you're created in all things. And But your will, they existed and were created. Uh, devotion and servitude. You know, being a servant. Prayer life and everyday example of Christ to others. Again, like going back and, and uh, talking about how others should, should view us and how we should act around others, especially those that are not in the, uh, that are Christians. Uh, continual prayer. Um, you know, this is something that we, we should know, but this is hard. It's hard for me. I struggle with continuous prayer. You know, there are things on this list that I struggle with and that I need to be more aware of and to, uh, I need to pray about. Um, and deep prayer meditation is the key to a calm spirit and attitude. Paying uh, on behalf of those who are lost and broken in spirit. Or praying, excuse me, I wrote that wrong. Praying on behalf of those who are lost and are broken in spirit. Uh, selfless love. We should have selfless love for those around us. Again, servitude to others as well as your family, uh, your brothers and sisters in Christ. Uh, Philippians 2, 3 through 10. It just talks about do nothing from selfish ambition or Conceit, but in humility, count others more significant than yourselves. Uh, we also are told to be separate from the world. We are to be that shining light, that shining example to the world, like Jesus was and, and those that followed him. Um, 
2 Corinthians 6, 17, Therefore go out in their midst and separate from them, says the Lord, and touch the unclean thing, it will, and touch no unclean thing, then I will welcome you. Uh, spiritual growth. Uh, let's see, we've got a couple minutes. Uh, spiritual growth. Uh, 1 Timothy 4, 8, while, For while bodily, uh, bodily training is for some value, godliness is the value in every way, as it holds promise to present life and also for the life to come. And obedience to God's instruction. I think, you know, with, with, with all of these combined together towards the end, obedience to God's instruction. So if everything else is, is a struggle, we need to be obedient to, to his instruction. And that will help us give that love for God, repentance from sin, genuine humility, devotion to God's glory, the prayer life, selfless love, separation from the world, and spiritual growth. Uh, let's... Uh, I think I think we got a couple more minutes. So let's. Uh, anybody have anything you kind of sh- want to share with this list before we go into prayer to close out the class? Yes, Albert, and then Brian. There are excellent things, and I don't say this looking like nothing new under the sun. We really should not be shocked about the the debased, immoral world because it's been generation after mm-hmm. generation. But that's why we're told to be prepared and to be ready and to um, not place this as our home, but this is just a temporary thing. Yeah. And in the scriptures you had, something that hit me, verse 7, train yourself. Uh, verse 11 of our reading tonight, command and teach. Verse 12, be an example in speech. 13, devote yourself. 14, do not neglect the gift. 15, practice these things. Immerse yourself. 16, keep a close, persist in this. Mm-hmm. So if we're going to be prepared for the coming of, of uh, a judgment and we want to be in heaven, then the, there's in the verses right here. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Brian, you got last word. Yeah, I just wanted to say that a good umbrella verse that covers all of this and more is Galatians 5, 6. Neither circumcision nor uncircumcision means anything but faith working through love. And then you can go over and cross-reference over to 1 Corinthians 7, 19, where he says the identical things, instead of saying faith working through love, it is the keeping of the commandments of God, which is faith working through love. And what mm-hmm. is that work? Service directly to God and service to God through service to others. Selfless, based upon love yeah. and faith. Yeah. Thank you for that. All right, let's go ahead and close the class in prayer. Please pray with me. Lord, we come to you again, studying your word, Lord, that we know that there are falseness, falselessness out there, and there are those who try to drive us away from your word and from your relationship, Lord, and that we remember those who are lost and those who are spiritually sick, and that we have to be careful and to not fall into those traps that Satan has set out for us. And we just remember to be a servant for you, Lord, and a servant and mirror Christ-like servitude where he was even at the feet washing those who he loved and wanted to, to teach and to help grow in, in your word, Lord. And we just are thankful for that example and thankful for everything you've given us. And please be with us as we go through the rest of this week and, and let us be strong in our servant servitude and humility in our prayer life and we just remember those things to be a servant of god to be a servant of you and uh, and to follow jesus example and it's your son's name we pray amen thank you everybody